professionals all across the globe are joining us today for today's session. So a very warm welcome to all dear participants. We, say, we shall be beginning with the session sharp at 6 p.m. Okay. Our expert for today's session, Professor K. Subramaniam, is already there with us. I also welcome all my participants who have taken time out of the busy schedule and joined us for today's session. I request all participants kindly check the audio and video settings on your system. I hope we are audible as well as visible to you. Uh, kindly also check your chat window. Uh, you can even uh, type your affiliations and share with us so that we know who all are there with us. The chat window is important because during the session you have any questions from our expert speaker. You can surely post it in the chat window. I shall be facilitating you by uh, asking the questions to our expert at the end of the session. And uh, at the end of the session, a feedback link would be to all of you in the chat window. You are required to fill the feedback form and submit it so that your certificate can be automatically generated and delivered to your inbox. So I request all the participants which devices you are logged in from uh, kindly check those devices. If there is an issue, the room is still open. So you may disconnect, change your device and log in from another device. Can I have a cup of coffee now? Sure, sir. Sure. <laughs> A very good evening to all participants. I welcome you all to today. The technology for 2021. Our expert for the session, Professor K. Subramaniam, image pastor, I believe, is the main topic already joined us for the session. We shall be starting with the session sharp at 6 Well, this is time for tea I hope all of you are enjoying tea at your home in a safe environment. And uh, kindly check the audio and video settings from the uh, machine from whatever machine you have joined us for the session. In case there are any problems, the room is still open. You can log out and be blind. I hope the chat window is accessible to all the participants. The chat window is the place where you can communicate with us. 
you have any questions you want to ask to our expert and you can send them on the chat window i should be facilitating of you by asking them to our expert at the end of the session at the end of the session we shall be sharing a feedback link to the chat window you are all request to kindly fill your this text in the chat form I welcome all my participants to today's webinar on believing the unbelievable dreams to reality post covid 19 uh, post covid technology new business models and applications 2021 our expert for the session professor uh, k subramaniam immediate past chair ieee delhi section senior member of ieee has already joined us for the session we shall be starting with the session sharp at 6 Meanwhile, it is time for tea and networking. So I would request all my participants. I hope you are enjoying tea at your home in a safe environment. Ah, uh, you can post your details in the chat window. Kindly ensure that the machine through which you have connected, you can access the chat window, because through the chat window you shall be able to communicate with us during this session. with the aim of pure knowledge dissemination and knowledge sharing we at bharti vidyapeet keep organizing various ftps refresher courses faculty induction program if it is of interest to you and if you have already not joined us you may click at the link that i have shared in the chat window for registration and for knowledge of all our such events of the future
The recorded video of all our activities are made available at the earliest possible through our BVI Cam YouTube channel. I have again shared the link for the same in the chat window. You may subscribe to it to get regular updates regarding our various uh, activities that are conducted. A very good evening to all my distinguished panelists and participants. I welcome you all to today's webinar on Believing the Unbelievable Technology for 2021. We shall be starting with today's session just in a few minutes from now, sharp at 6 p.m. Meanwhile, it is time for tea and networking. So I hope all of you are enjoying tea at your home in a safe environment. And I hope uh, the connections on your system are all fine. We are audible and visible to all of you. And I hope the chat window is accessible to all the participants. In case there is an issue in accessing the chat window on your machine, I request you to kindly change your machine. The room is open yet, so you may uh, change your machine, log out and rejoin. Once the session begins, the room will be locked. And in case you log out, there will be no mechanism through which you can rejoin. The webinar will be also uh, live uh, streamed on our YouTube channel, but uh, I request participants that all other mechanisms are only for knowledge dissemination. So any participants who would be joining us through those channels will not receive their certificate of participation. So if any of your colleagues or uh, friends have joined us through any other mechanisms, I request the participants kindly inform them the room is still open. So they may join us uh, directly through the WebEx link and attend the session to receive their certificate of participation at the end.
some participants are querying about the uh, registration link for feedback submission. The register uh, the feedback submission link shall be shared at the end of the session right in this chat window, dear participant. So uh, at this moment, I would say you can enjoy the session. At the end of the session, we will be sharing the feedback uh, form link. You will just click on that feedback form and you can easily fill your details and submit that. It is said without any further delay, uh, I would take the permission of my expert, uh, Professor Subramaniam. And uh, sir, can can we uh, begin with the session? Uh, Subramaniam, sir, can we start with the session? Ritika, I think you might have muted. Please check. Uh, I'm sorry, I was on mute. Uh, it is already six, so without any further delay, I would uh, take uh, the permission uh, of my uh, experts. Uh, could we start with of my experts? Sir? Sir? Could we start with the session, Subramaniam, sir? Ma'am, your both mics are on, mobile as well as laptop. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Tum, sir. Supramaniam, sir, can we start with the session? Uh, Subramaniam, sir, I hope I'm audible. We can start with the session. Uh, Subramaniam, sir, uh, with your permission, could, could I start yeah. the session? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I sir. think I am I'm unmuted. Yeah, I have to, you have to unmute me. Okay, sir. Uh, uh, I would be starting with the session now without any further delay. Okay, so, very good Are evening me? to all distinguished panelists and participants. Bharti Vidyapeet Institute of Computer Applications and Management, in association with Computer Science Chapter of IEEE Delhi Section, Consultants Network Affinity, CNA Group of IEEE Delhi Section, Life Member Affinity, LMA Group of IEEE Delhi Section, Inter-Society Relations, IRS Standing Committee of IEEE Delhi Section, Industry Relations and Site Standing Committees of IEEE Delhi Section with the Association of Computer Society of India, SAPA Society, ISC Delhi Section and IED Delhi Center welcomes you all to this webinar on Believing the Unbelievable Technology for 2021. Tim O'Reilly stated that what new technologies does is create new opportunities to do a job that customers want done. With the recent pushover to digitalization due to the corona pandemic, many new technologies have come to the forefront for providing efficient solutions for unhindered operations of global business and enterprises. These economic, social, political, 
and technological drivers show a stronger relationship between information and economy. There is going to be a sea change in the workplace and its workforce. The future enterprises have to devise a new generation of HR policies to retain and sustain global knowledge workforce. The green computing and the environmental protection and sustainable development assume far greater significance than thought. Latest development in the Internet of Things, IoT, demand a collaborative, cooperative, and coexisting workforce for sustainable development. Creativity, innovation, and productivity are the three major factors to be nurtured and practiced by the people, enterprises, and the nation for sustainable growth. A new era of cognitive systems where machines will learn, reason, and engage with us in a more natural and personalized way is not far off. These innovations are being facilitated by the interconnection of technologies like multi-hybrid cloud computing, artificial intelligence, and virtual reality, big data analytics, and learning technologies like machine learning and deep learning. With the appropriate privacy and security considerations for consumers, citizens, students, and organizations for a better living on this planet. This webinar today is aimed to discuss all these challenging issues which are facilitating all these massive changes, breaking the barriers, and making the whole world a connected village. I will first take this opportunity to welcome amongst us all our distinguished panelists today. We are privileged to have among us a galaxy of experts. I will. I now also take this opportunity to welcome among us our expert speaker for today, uh, Professor K. Subramaniam, I Triple E Ambassador and Area Coordinator. India IEEE CS GAC is our expert for today. Professor Subramaniam was the first director and professor at Advanced Center for Informatics and Innovation Learning, ACIIL at IGNO. He was also one of the founder creators of National Informatics Center under the Ministry of Communications and Information Technology, Government of India, and has served there for over 32 years and was superannuated as senior DBB. He also served as the information technology advisor to CAG of India, Comptroller and Auditor General for more than a decade and a half. With over three and a half decades of experience in architecture, design, development, implementation, and audit of technology and systems of the federal, state, districts in the Union of India, Sir has also served as a technical member in the Quality Council of India for accreditation of the technical skills required by IT and ITES industry on behalf of NASA. A pioneer in introducing technology into banking, insurance, and financial services for more than three decades. As an expert, Sir has also served as a member of committee of NAC, Ministry of HRD, for the accreditation of institutions and served as a member of technical committees of Quality Council of India for certified, uh, certifiers of IS 9000, IS 27000 and IS 20000 standards. He has also served as a visiting professor at National Institute for Multimedia Education, Japan, an adjunct professor at IIM Lucknow, IIT Delhi, Four School of Management, IIM Bangalore, IMT Ghaziabad, MDI, NILLM, and Triple ITM Kerala, and Triple IT Bangalore. We are privileged to have you among us today, sir. I would now request you to kindly take over the session and enlighten the house. Yeah, good evening, Rizika. Thanks a lot for giving me a chance, an opportunity to address all of you on this new topic, Believing the Unbelievable, Dreams to Reality, 
and what is the kind of post-COVID technology, new business models evolving in 2021. So this, I think, uh, I have just collected a lot of information on this and made a capsule module to observe what is happening today around us, within us, and for us. I think this is a very interesting uh, presentation, which I'd like to make, and hope you engage for nearly one hour, 10 minutes. <clears throat> Uh, thank you for giving me an opportunity. I thank Professor Vada for giving me an opportunity for talking today, and I'll proceed with my presentation. Just a minute, it got stuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I just made an outline of the presentation here that uh, one, I think you are coming this way. Seven was technology prediction so far. I think what we have predicted went wrong. Let us talk about something interesting on this. Second part of the presentation is going to be technologies to make this happen. Third part of the presentation is going to be themes to reality, imagining the unimagined. Paradigm shift, changes in business models, and some use cases. Maybe I'm going to present 12 good cases today. COVID, a major disruption again, a paradigm shift, birth of new things, changing the human behavior, way of doing things, WFH, remote management, SEM models change, delivery model change, labor and infrastructure changes. Sectors most affected are business, economy, agriculture, financial services, health services, education, Transportation, surface rail and air, tourism, hospitality, hotels, and even management of reality, maybe etc. Other things also affected to some extent. New transformative business models have evolved. Innovation, design thinking, engineering and technology management, lifestyle management, and management of businesses, economy, monetary, and physical management, and governance. And uh, to end our presentation, I would like to give seven good stories of achievement in 2020. So seven worst technology predictions of all time. Maybe possibly you'll wonder, what is this? So foolish technology prediction number one is there is a there's a world market for only five computers. I think this is not told by me. <laughs> this is told by the IBM. At the dawn of the computer industry, nobody really know where this new technology would take us. But the explosion of desktop computing that is put a PC in nearly every home within 50 years seems to have eluded the imagination of most mindset century futurists. After all, when IBM Thomas Watson said computer he meant a vacuum tube powered adding adding machine that is as big as a house, it is fair to say that few people ever wanted one of these, regardless of size of the desk. IBM did say in the business, of course, for details see our respective personal computer 25th century, they admitted that they made a mistake in prediction. Second foolish prediction too, is television won't be able to hold on to any market it captures after six months. People will soon get tired of staring at the plywood box every night. This is what I think Daryl Zanuck, the executive of the 20th century Fox said in 1946. By 1946, movie executive Daryl Lendo had already cemented his place in entertainment history as a producer of more than 100 films for the big silver screen. So who could have blamed him for underestimating the power of a small blue screen? I am guessing that if Lendo is were alive today, you will find himself just as mesmerized as the rest of us by the mind-crushing distortion loop that a modern TV program has begun. But the TV is set rock. The third prediction, police prediction, which has been made by people, nuclear-powered vacuum cleaners will probably be a reality within 10 years. In 1950s, the only thing more certain than Red Menace was the innovability of atomic power. So when the New Jersey-based vacuum cleaner, Poncho Alex Levitt, heralded a tomorrow in which nuclear-powered appliances would suck up that in every American household, the news probably caused a few eyebrows to rise. Remember, this was the era of radium impregnated paint up going in, in the dark dials. Peaceful radioactivity seemed as safe as asbestos. Of course, the British vision has yet to come true, and it is likely won't until after nuclear reactors are enlisted to power all the terminator robots of our post-Kinet future. So I think uh, 
Agnew will have to here. The fourth prediction is there is no reason for anyone to want a computer in the room. This is, uh, this is predicted by Ken Nelson, founder of DEC, Digital Equipment Corporation, 1977. Not, uh, not very late, but 1977. Digital Equipment Corporation was acquired by Compaq, then afterwards HP. But these ready-made personal computers like the MIT's Altair has hit the market a couple of years earlier. And within four years of Alton's remark, the release of the IBM PC has enshrined the prediction is high tech, high tech all of shame. Police prediction five is almost all my predictions about 1996 on internet continuing exponential growth. But I predict the internet will soon go spectacularly supernova and 1996 has collapse. This is what is mean by the founder of 3 in 1995. In addition to being legend, legendary technology visionary and a man widely credited with having invented Ethernet, Bob McAfee was also a columnist for the PC World, sister publication in World. And it was in that column that McAfee made what must have been the most regrettable comment of his career. Indeed, he even promised to eat this words if his angry hungry turned to be wrong. To his credit, Metkwe made a good on the promise in 1999 during his keynote speech at the International Worldwide Web Conference, where he blended up a copy of his printed column with some liquid and drank it down before a crowd of onlookers. So he made a mistake and he swallowed whatever he has written. The foolish prediction six is, just about everyone in the computer business thought that Apple was in his death throes when Microsoft CTO Northern Mayor made this comment back in 1997. And Apple is already dead, Northern said in 1997. But what happened to Apple, you know it. So seventh prediction is the amount of spam constantly grilling up the magnet is somewhere around 92% of all email messages worldwide. And this is what I think Bill Gates said. Two years from now, Spam will be solved. The dead founder of Microsoft 2004. So, good guess, Bill. Glad that is taken care of. Every mail is almost having spam nowadays. So, everything technologies for human lives, transformation and sustainability. I think let us see a few technologies which are upcoming or which are already there in the market now today. Cognitive science, artificial intelligence robots, robotics, machine learning, security technologies. Technologies for mobility and ease of use, cyber analytics and big data engineering, analytics and governance, unified devices for multiple technologies, supportive hardware networking software technology. I think this is emerging technology which is transforming the human life for, and it's also sustainable now. I think you see this diagram, the Internet of Things. I think it has not left any sector to be pervasive. Is, all devices are coming with IoT nowadays, all locations is available, all application groups scan through, all service address is uh, scanned, so all the application groups has been made public in enterprise and public uh, private. All locations, you can see the IOTs, all devices are supposed to be in IOT realm nowadays. So I think the whole penetration of the whole world, the energy, service sectors, the consumer and home, the healthcare and life sciences, the industrial, transportation, retail, security, public safety, and IT networks. All these things are using IoT nowadays. So I think I just wanted to give some use cases, imagining the unimagined changes in business models. I think very interesting 12 use cases I am presenting today. One, IBM and Microsoft. In 1943, they thought that the whole world requires only four computers. IBM president in 1943 said this. At the time, computer occupies the whole house. However, they started manufacturing. Bill Gates started Microsoft and making this software for the PCs. Today, every household has more than one computer in some form and at an affordable cost. I think the business model has changed. The PCs and laptops, tablets, and handle devices have changed the whole scenario. <coughs> Next is autonomous wireless vehicles, new concept, car done by Mr. Ford. Our mission is to strengthen communities and help make people's lives better. Our purpose is to drive human progress through freedom of movement. Ford Motor Company, commonly known as Ford, is an American multinational automaker 
that has its main headquarters in Michigan, a suburb of Detroit. It was founded by Henry Ford and incorporated in June 1993. New autonomous vehicles are designed and delivered today, what he dreamt earlier. Third is unanimous business models flying machines. First flying machine and advanced aircraft. Right, first flying machine was born in 1992. Today, new aircraft, passenger aircraft and flight aircraft with all comforts at a cost affordable to people, enabling faster transportation between two destinations. The model has come true. So I think unanimous business models is OVO. OVO room stands for work on your own rooms. It is India's largest total network which is spread over 199 cities. It is headquartered at Gurugram in Haryana. Voyo was started as a hotel aggregator and used to lease some rooms and sell them under its brand name. However, it changed its business model from the aggregator to the franchise model. It involved partnering with hotels, asking them to operate as a franchisee and selling their rooms to the customers at a competitive price. Now, Voyo rooms, also known as Voyo Hotels and Homes, is an Indian hospitality chain of leased and franchised hotels, rooms, homes, and living spaces. Founded in 2013 by Richard Agarwal, OIO initially consisted of mainly a budget hotel. Today, it's a flourishing business. For this, I mean, Uber, I think without owning a single car, without owning a single driver, he was, he was planning to provide a taxi service. <laughs> Very interesting role model. Uber technology is incorporated commonly known as Uber. Is an American company that offers vehicles for hire, food delivery, package delivery, couriers, flight and transportation, and through a partnership of line, electric bicycle and motorist scooter rental. Taxi drivers use their own cars when providing a taxi service and over 20% of the fare. The total process is very simple. Registered Uber users ask for a taxi using the Uber application, and our Uber driver then dispatch to the passenger location and assist the passengers to reach their destination. So they are Uber gets 20% of the revenue. Fair. So I think there's a model with owning a taxi, with owning a car driver, he is providing a taxi service. This was unimaginable earlier. Now it's working model. I think uh, Netflix, you take the Netflix, you have to go to theater to see a movie. No user choice. Can only select a theater where some movies are shown. But today what happened? On-demand movies at the comfort of your home, and a movie of your choice and a subscription service model is available. I think this is an unanimous business model. Netflix has changed the whole entire gamut of movie we. Furniture assembly and delivery, a new business model, IKEA started. Furniture has to be bought, oil is available, that is available and transported to the home. This was the earlier model. <coughs> so IKEA SAR is a multinational conglomerate that designs and sells ready to assemble furniture kitchen appliances and home accessories, and other useful goods and occasionally home services. Founded in Sweden in 1943 by a 17-year-old Ingvar Kamprad, IKEA has been the world's largest furniture retailer since 2008. So assembled by yourself, modular furniture delivered through Amazon, Flipkart, or etc. IKEA's mission is to provide a better everyday life for people and keeping the mission alive are their everyday employees. The team IKEA share the same principle that may may be able may be should be able to create the home and they wanted to team up, team up with the furniture which they can design on their own. Concept of SpaceX. Yeah, imagine an unimaginable business of space. So SpaceX is a reusable rocket maker and a transportation in space. Space Exploration Technologies Corporation is an American aerospace manufacturer and a space transportation services company headquarters in Athron, California. It was founded by 2002 by Elon Musk with the, global, with the goal of reducing space transportation costs to enable the colonization of Mars. Now, a roaring business. SpaceX is also available in India too. Airbnb, an idea of new business model. Airbnb incorporates is an American vacation rental online marketplace, a company based in San Francisco, California, United States. Here, Airbnb maintains and hosts a marketplace to accessible to consumers and its via website or via an application. Now you can call Times Square home for just one night while watching the new year you ball draft from your own very own isolated geographic home only on Airbnb. The sharing economy is a commercial or economic model often referred to as a peer-to-peer -peer economy. 
Airbnb connects travelers seeking affordable lodgings with those who offer their properties as short-term rentals. The renters are charged a non-refundable service fee of 14.2% based on the listing of the place where they would like to share and go. I think another model is airline pricing. I think this is a very interesting model model. Ask for a price and you'll get an airline seat. I think this is the model which has been running today in the United States and also in India, they started by the Khan. They had a common business model, but it's now rarely available. But of course, this is going to be the thing of the future. Flying cost was very high. So limited streets of rupee one made practical and had become made profits flying full. Competitive pricing model reduced the air fare and made it affordable. I think this is our own model, which is differently, different model than what Captain Gopina thought and is working well. PayPal, an unimaginable business model, PayPal. PayPal is a faster, safer way of to send money, make an online payment, receive money, or set up a merchant account. PayPal Holdings Incorporated is an American company operating an online payment system in the majority of countries that supports online money transfers and serves as an electronic alternative to traditional paper methods like checks and money orders. So PayPal has become a rolling business model now. Lego, a non-name business model of Lego. Lego system is a Danish toy production company based in Milan. It is the best known manufacturer of Lego brand toys, consisting mostly of interlocking of plastic bricks. The Lego group has also built several amusement parks around the world known as Lego Land and operates numerous retail stores. Today, plastic building blocks are used as toys for mental and knowledge building for children. Explore the world through Lego, through games, videos, products, and more. Awesome Lego building toys, amid big sets, and find the perfect gift for your kid. This is what I think the company started advertising, and it's a working model today, and you can see the Lego uh, business toys. So I think uh, if you see it here, what is an annual dream? Every household to have computers. Every system should be connected. Car dreamt by fraud, people transportation, which is being true. Flying machines dreamt by raid brothers, is aircraft to advance aircraft design and going. Hotels with more rooms available at any time, anywhere, and cheap. And hired cars, taxi service, without owning a taxi, without owning a driver. Movies and theaters on demand, availability and cost. Flying furniture, this buying furniture has capability, commission out of the dreams. Whatever you want, you can see on demand, you can buy. River, revisable records and space exploration, I think SpaceX. Cheaper hospitality and tourism, shareable rooms and economical cost. Flexible pricing in the industry for the price of travel to places to where you want to go. Tours by assembly, price by assembly. I think it's all for animal dream earlier is now reality today. Every household has multiple computers, mobile phone for every citizen. Internet and mobile communication, anything, everything is connected to cyber of everything. Automatic and driverless cars, autonomous vehicles are oh, practically available today. Dreamliners, aircraft, modern aircraft for passenger and flight with all compass, faster and much safer. OVO, a reality. Uber taxi anytime, anywhere, lower cost with the modern amenities. Netflix, movies on demand at the comfort of your home, subscription service. IKEA is a model of furniture assembled by yourself. SpaceX, spacecraft used for exploration there, other planets and colonization. Airbnb, reality rooms available on demand, terrible economy. Air Decan, rupee one for travel to any fixed destination. Competitive pricing and filling up the seats on a limited basis. PayPal, anytime, anywhere, payment to whom you want to pay. Lego, assembly of building blocks of plastics are wooden. Ties by assembly making children to build. Increase mental and thinking and knowledgeable build, knowledge building society, capability. I think this is all reality today. Now, innovations, potential to change the way people work, uh, live, and interact during the next five years. By creating technology that's explicitly designed to learn and enhance our recognition, we will usher into a new era of progress but both individuals and for society at large. This is what I think the Daria Gill, director of the Country Experience Lab said, IBM. The classroom will learn you. I think uh, classroom will know what is your pace of learning, what is your depth of learning, what is your capacity, 
and what is the absorption level. All the things will be taken into kind of delivery system of education delivery system in a classroom, real classroom. Buying a local with bill online. I think people thought that the retail chains will come and uh, remember the market and local local wallas will be dying. But buying local with bid online, this is a prediction, which is true because they are going to be connected and they are going to give you what you want, where you want, how you want to be delivered to home at any time you want. Doctors will routinely use the DNA to keep you well. I think your healthcare parameters are going to be monitored on a continuous basis and also your DNA will be mapped and so that doctors will keep you well all the time, anytime, anywhere, healthcare, or to anywhere, anyone. A digital guardian will protect you online. I think security becomes a major issue. So digital guardian, so many passwords, so many access control device things are coming up. So I only remember all these things. It is not possible humanly to remember every password. So what we thought was a digital guardian is going to be made to protect you online. And it, uh, it always stores and knows your passwords and access rights. The city will help you to live in it. I think smart city projects, I think where the city is going to be smart, it will make you comfortable to live in it. I think uh, the future of education will be blended learning. The pandemic was to the tech space, what demonization was to the mobile wireless. I think mobile wireless came up after demonization, right? The future of education, education will be blended learning. Today, I think we know those who are not able to imagine that online learning will be there as the COVID pandemic case you, every school has become online. Every class has become online. Every division has become online. So online learning, online blended mode of learning is going to be the way of future. So I think one of the 2020's biggest frustrations was the upset of halting on a person K-12 and college education moving everything online. Instructors struggled to master video tools and class attendance dwindled. The edtech space consequently blossomed. Five of the eight dollar hundred million and above funding rounds during the April September involved. Tech forms. So I think by use, user base grew by 20 million. Facebook back and Win Academy is gearing up for strategic acquisitions. I think just a note, ban did not eliminate cash usage. Online learning will not substitute physical classroom, but it will contribute a sizable portion of the education sector post COVID-19, says Dr. Shishank Cha, SAA fellow 97 Harvard University. New York institutions may introduce more online courses, says Jayan Ghosh Thomas, Associate Professor at IIT Delhi, creating opportunities in both the education system and the job market. Our avenues will open up in small towns, like co-working spaces, co-learning solutions to promote a sense of community may crop up. Meanwhile, leading business video players such as Zoom, Cisco's WebEx, and Microsoft Teams are likely to move quickly to address the needs of the education market in 2021. So Microsoft also wants LinkedIn. Raju Bangaya, businessman. The internet to monetize their talent and skills. I think great recession of 2008 set up a way of entrepreneurism at high employment, employment and courage would be business owners to pursue the great idea rather than really on a thumb, turbulent job market. So Silicon Valley is proud of juggernauts like Slack, Uber and Airbnb in the wake of the downturn. Closer to home, this year saw a launch of nice of technology businesses like Raposo, Chingari, Emoji, Moj, Hoji, and Lodo King. The year 2021 will see even more thrust as BGs look to invest in local Indian technology solutions for uniquely Indian consumer needs. So sectors such as EduTech, video led social networks, video games may continue to see new investment, glamorous advertising, and aggressive user acquisition. Raju Mangya, businessman, may you just see that it will start to see more people step off the carpet ladder and start their own businesses, maybe at an accelerated rate like what we have not seen before. When pandemic has devastated local economies around the, around the world and put millions out of work, it will set up an entrepreneurial renaissance. The shift has already begun. Many job speakers in India turn into their own buses starting at home businesses. Solo entrepreneurs are going to be increasing significantly. Expect people to use internet to monetize their talent and skills to the fullest. Says LinkedIn India top voice, Avinal Badnagar, a venture capitalist and venture highway. Now, borders no bar for startup funding and hiring. 
I think this is a talent losing geographical boundaries. Top resources in India will become accessible to global startups and vice versa. People being oriented business requiring frequent travel, early stage investing inevitably took a sharp hit as lockdown spread market this year. While the recovery was seen by September, the uptick was more on the safe belt, safe bets, the late stage startups. But 2020 taught investors how to make funding decisions remotely through video calls, discrete reference checks, and talking to multiple employees at the startups, says Amish Somani, managing partner of the Prime Ventures. The outcome? Intra-India diversity. The rise of new venture capital funds and the heightened activity of family offices of wealthy Indians spread all over the country will deepen this trend, says Sitpai, founder of China Capital. Foreign money is also now increasingly interested in the homegrown startup scene. But funding activity will take some time to come into its own post-COVID-19. While 2021 will be a start, a lot more will happen over the next five to 10 years. Startups also figured out how to hire and manage employees remotely. As this trend catches on, learning how to manage culture and help employees stick to the work-life boundaries remains a challenge, so many say. With talent losing geographical boundaries, top resources in India will become accessible global startups, even without a physical presence there, yeah, and vice versa. So as an entrepreneur, you will have to keep winning over your employees every day. I think this is a lesson learned. Yes, we'll have a vaccine condition supply. Everyone is hoping that 2021 will bring the relief <coughs> on the COVID-19 crisis. And the public health experts believe there's a reason to be optimistic. Already two a few vaccines have come up in the market. The potential is to, but our openly not available, but it's available to doctors and hospitals and the health ministries are buying it. The potential to have a major impact on this pandemic is very real, says Michael Rostam, an epidemiologist at the University of Minnesota Center for Infectious Disease and Research Policy. And it is all focused on a vaccine. But there are some covets. While the first vaccine candidates are already moving through approval process, it is likely to what we'll see two or three generations of vaccine over the next few years. A vaccine needs to not only be effective, but also durable, meaning the protection lasts for an extended period of time that people must be willing to take it. I think the storage time is going to be less now, but it's going to be enhanced by means of continuous research. Vaccine, vaccine, vaccine everywhere. Treatments and diagnostics are also likely to improve, meaning the mortality rates should continue to down, edge downward. But 2021 is also likely to bring a fair bit of frustration. The rollout of the vaccine will take a longer than expected, says Greg Martin, a Dublin-based public health specialist at Health Service Executive, who estimated that it will likely take six to nine months after approval for the general public to have access to it. With a little political appetite for more lockdowns, cases may be a spike even after a vaccine is available. We have to make sure that we don't make we don't take our foot off the pedal. Martin said, there's a bit crucial said. So not the first pandemic, definitely not the last. The environment is solely responsible. The COVID-19 pandemic has made clear that our health is inextricably tied to a larger environmental issues. Increased population density, global travel, deforestation, large-scale farming, melting of the permafrost as disrupted animal habitats, bringing them to closer contact with humans. This has raised the risk of more frequent zoonotic disease outbreaks and therefore higher potential of another pandemic. Last century, there were only a handful of diseases like linked to animals, but those numbers have accelerated in the last decade. Now, they're averaging every two years, says Greg Martin, a public health specialist. The pandemic has also shown the health is a matter of racial justice and equal inequality as well, with the crisis forcing a disproportionate impact on minorities and communities that are indigenous. This has pushed health care providers and governments to take socioeconomic factors that replace who gets sick and who recovers. COVID-19 has laid bare our public health system, said Richard Roth, Chief Strategic Innovation Officer at Common Spirit Health, one of the largest health care providers in the US. It has put a spotlight on the fatalities with the system. I think this is what Bob Richard said. Now, healthcare experts will be the new influencers. I think very interesting prediction. If there is one thing we have learned about people's shopping habits opened up in their homes this year, that is the impulse of giving way to purpose. 
for the pandemic shopper, the purchase decisions for categories such as organic food to immunity boosters to varieties of hygiene products are also no longer driven by whims. Little wonder then the companies rolled out thousands of products and variants to cater to the changing consumer demands. And guess who is becoming new year influencer driving sales? It is not social media. Influencers are advertising extravaganza, but they're recommended by doctors, dentists, and other experts that will sway preferences in the near future, says the Arthur Chopra marketing leader, Oral Health. In small towns across India, the registered medical practitioner, even the compounder, is already an influencer. The only busy, car basic, non doctors are next in line, says brand strategy expert, Arish Bijor. Experts in segments like health care, care, and skin care will further influence what brands and products consumers add to their consideration set. Product offering mix will change here too, with categories which have very little to do with healthcare morphing. Think Shana Products High Scale. For brands, this will be an opportunity to leapfrog their product innovation. This year, 2021 must have technology, anything that makes us feel safer. Forget faster, better renewal, better newer and different. Next year's technology and innovation wish list will focus on products and services that makes feel safer. Like the pulse oximeter, most of the folks have not even heard of it until last March. But came lockdown, almost everyone scrambled to get one so that they can easily monitor their blood oxygen levels at home. Now Apple's latest smartwatch advertises the fact that it can detect blood oxygen levels. We will want to travel on planes that have been cleaned with an electrostatic sprayer. North Indian states that uh, the deal from the poor air quality will have a renewed interest in their air period phase of all kinds. Latest car models from the Hyundai to Kia Motors have started providing a car air purifier as a must for the gadget, must for gadget. Our employers will invest in voice activated smartphones that are let first responders communicate without removing their personal protective equipment and security cameras that can map whether people are social distancing or not. The demand for safety will also extend to methods large technical companies use to protect their members from harassment. We have grown increasingly worried about the risk to data misuse and misinformation posed to the people who use the services and society at large. With the widespread commercialization of everything from facial recognition to voice technology, we will learn on both government and regulators and commercial regulators to pressurize, to pressure these companies to handle our data responsibly and securely. Subscription models will reshape your travel plans. The pandemic wrecked havoc on the travel industry in 2020. International travel all but all but ordered to for many countries. Airlines have failed, filled for bankruptcy production. Traditional tourist spots have become poor spots. The travel industry has been forced to rip up big chunks of the brakes and start fresh. Our own idea gaining traction, travel subscriptions. Travel subscriptions in the US. Costco has partnered with Wheels Up to offer a yearly private jet subscription model for $17,000. <coughs> TripAdvisor is launching a yearly subscription service called TripAdvisor Plus for US $1.99, which offers access to travel deals and other packs. And some airlines have begun experimenting with travel subscriptions as well, where they offer fixed rate flights in exchange for a secure continuous source of revenue. In Southeast Asia, we already seen airlines testing the waters with their concept, says Anna Pearson, founder of the Kuala Lumpur based travel consulting company. We are understood. Air Asia launched an ultimate, ultimate unlimited pass for domestic flights in Malaysia earlier this year. And given that they are now rolled out in Thailand, the Philippines, Indonesia, we can reduce this it has to be a success and will also happen in India too. Another area Pearson would see taking off subscription workstations. Work, uh, where what will change offer flexible bookings and benefits for customers to stay and work out of any of their hotels across the country. We are starting to see this to come up in countries like Singapore, where hotels are now offering specific work packages. In India, yet Centric in Bangalore launched the work pad package this year, along with the lunch subscription plan, with uh, where others like ITC offer day use packages for corporate executives. I think very, very interesting things are what else we're offering uh, differential services. For renting homes to owning one, I think this is another interesting thing that's going to happen in 20, 2021. Layoffs and Sunday cuts in 2020 caused many to move out of their home buying market. 
but there are other factors to play. Multi-decade low market rates, government announced reform measures, and of course the pandemic thrust to the growing sentiment of savings and asset creation. Result, a rising affinity towards very spacious yet affordable homes in the suburbs, suburbs of big cities and in small towns. Even millennials are joining the bandwagon anticipating lower commutes, commutes to in the future. As homes double up near permanent workplaces for many, buyers now want more carpet area, balconies and greener spaces, says Renuga Malhotra, President, Carpet Brand Communication, Loza Group. They, they, data backs this claim. Around 90% of prospective home buyers said they want to study room, study, they want to study room and outdoor area in a recent real survey. I think very, very interesting thing of renting homes to going home. For many workers, nine to five will become three to two work week. Very interesting labor policy and labor, uh, what labor wants. Business leaders are going to be forced to rethink how the companies will work in a post pandemic world. One of the biggest questions they face, where and when employees can work. By the time they safe to return to office, many workers will have spent a year or more working from home, and many are enjoying the extra time and flexibility. Companies may let employees work from home for two or more days per week, with some opting for three days in office, two days remote, and then two days off, a three to two work week. If you will, according to Ashe Williams, a professor of Harvard Business School, Employees will demand greater flexibility and organization will require it. Will uh, Willan said, what is the flexibility will look like? It will vary depending upon the sector and the geographic location. But hopefully, if we do this right, gridlock morning commutes will be a thing of the past. That means morning rush is not going to be there in the commutation of rail, railroad and air. Recent data from LinkedIn workforce conference, in, conference index shows more than two in five professions in India sector including software and IT services, finance and corporate services, believe that companies will adopt a hybrid model of both physical and remote working post-COVID-19, which is a section of workforce mostly working from home. I think three to two week work week is going to be the plan, maybe possibly will be implemented this year. Offices will be redesignated to thrillers. I think what is happening to office space? After a year of working from home, our power dynamics has shifted. Companies will need to give employees a reason to return to office. Uh, an offer, space is designed for what we have been missing all along, human connection, and maybe a bit of rest and relaxation too. I think people miss the people most. This is a credible value to real life in-person contact, says this bro, a former vice president of workplace strategy. Boro says offices will function in two key ways, as spaces where people gather for leadership, personal development and culture as uh, club houses where they come together to collaborate and con congregate. Either way, we won't be gathering in them five days a week anymore. The transformation won't uh, simply be philosophical. It is physical too. Assigning seating is assigned seat is gone, says uh, Brittany Van Mathe, the Nike's director for workplace strategy and operations. Surveys from Nike shows employees want to work in an office, but only twice a week. And then they do come in, they do want to be collaborative. Office design needs to accommodate this activity-based working. She says, the term for flexible spaces that suit a variety of needs. So by collaborative spaces alone, may not be enough to draw people back. Once Van Matre, she believes companies would be wise to entice people with their heatless headquarters with a lot of amenities and a super slick experience. A really unique experience that you can get anywhere else, Van Matre suggests. Companies may want to consider setting up outposts in unconventional locales like rural, scenic areas, more associated with the leisure, creating a reprieve of employees can gravitate towards. I think this is what Susie Jackson said. I think offices will be redesigned to fill us. The dawn of the servant leader. I think very interesting concept. As we strive to overcome global pandemic and economic recession, the character of leaders will matter as much as the competence. In 2021, servant leadership will become a competitive advantage. Psychologists find that the pace for threats of our jobs and our lives, we become more concerned about precarity and purpose. We are looking for a sense of confidence that our jobs are secure and a sense of contribution to a cost larger than ourselves. <clears throat> this will give servant leaders an edge in recruiting 
motivating and retaining talented people. Servant leaders are givers, not takers. We can count on them to put our interest above their own. They recognize us that people are the most important resource of a company, and they are the company. I think people are not resource for the company, but they are the company themselves. Those who won't lay off us, lay off at the door of drop of hat. They will do whatever they can do to save our jobs. They won't keep us to the teeter to the office or a schedule. They will give us a freedom and flexibility to work wherever and whenever works demands for us. They won't become micromanagers. They will become macro managers who rally people around a meaningful mission. Those who are, those who won't keep us stuck in a dead end jobs. They will create opportunities for growth and advancement. And this is not enough path. They will care enough to support us in finding a safe path out. I think this is the organization psychologist at bottom said. So think again, the power of knowing what you don't know, available in February 2, 2021, uh, Harvard Journal. Get ready for global recession, Act 2. As the years produced no shortage of surprises comes to a close, the economy is already signaling big one for 2021. The global recession may only be the opening act. The initial economic downturn induced by synchronous global shutdowns as pandemic proliferated has led to conditions that new expose of underlying most fundamental recession according to economist Ernie Kretschy. The science industries that are not directly affected by the health crisis are now experiencing job losses, classified as temporary as being classified as a permanent, and the rate of long-term unemployment, a disturbing hallmark of the Great Recession, is on the rise. The implication, a double deep recession, is the greatest risk for 2021, according to the economist Campbell Harvey. The economist Mohamed Ali and agrees, deeming the risk of a subsequent recession and high and rising based global data is watching from the manufacturing and services sectors. Such economic jargon has human implications. We won't get a second chance to make the right choice, said Mark Lockwood, UN Undersecretary General for Humanitarian Affairs. A long ascent of our year's deep recession will be uneven, uncertain, and prone to setbacks, the head of the International Monetary Fund said. The road to strong, sustainable, balanced, inclusive growth will be long and difficult. This is what David Manager said. So United Nations, what appeals? United Nations is appealing for a dollar thirty-five billion support for humanitarian work, projecting that two thirty-five million, two thirty-five million people will need assistance in 2021, an almost 40% jump from the last year. For hotels, side, hotels, side hustles will ensure survival. How will you survive in this kind of scenario? You are hoping 90,000 crores. There was the hospital sector estimated loss on the revenue front from 2020. As a hotel chain struggled to tide over losses and cater to homebound consumers, ancillary business of units opportunities offered a way of expand the business horizon. Home delivery services, from the popular restaurants, co-working spaces to corporates, subletting the public areas and banquet spaces. While this was a short-term fix, the results were surprisingly good for many and directly connected with the end users, says Ivy Speak. President and CEO of Interglobe Hotels, which is the, why hotel brands are likely to get more innovative, leverage the skills of their staff, and collaborate with more external service providers to grow this segment. Minor operating departments typically amount for 3 to 5 percent of revenues, but there's a potential to push it up to 10 percent, as Messing says. The groundwork is done, and the pilot stage is implementation is over. Hotels are set to ramp up these ideas to full scale. Physical brands with this shape to shape the future of retail. I think retail business is going to change. A perfect confluence of technology knowledge about customers and touch relationship with customers is what retail brands will aspire for and build upon in 2021. With people continuing to prefer a cashless and contactless shopping experience, they will want the best of the both worlds, making brands to go for integration of digital and physical, say Sarvin Mandarita, Mandarin CEO of Metro Cash and Carry India, Cash and Carry India. This will mean adopting an omni-channel approach through a mix of innovation and technology, use of augmented and virtual reality, beacons or geofencing, interactive kiosks for every product, information, and self-checkouts will become critical to provide immersive shopping experiences. The companies will double their efforts to guard customer behavior and investments in analytics and staff training will increase. That's what CK Venkraman, MD Titan company said. We have two trends 
that you can anticipate. Home visits by retail store executives for product presentations, getting updates on new collections through various forms of web communication, even video messages on your birthdays, anniversaries from brands. I think this is what LinkedIn says. So what is the new breakthrough achievement in 2020? <laughs> Disease breakthroughs in 2020 included new potential cancer treatments and falling hepatitis B cases in children under five. I think very, very interesting observation has been made that uh, cancer breakthroughs have happened in 2020 and updated B cases have come down. Technological advances brought us a world post artificial high and new NASA intelligence of water and the moon. The United Nations World Food Program, World Economic Forum, and other agencies continue to work to tackle global challenges, including hunger, climate change, and gender equality. It has been incredibly tough a year as a COVID 19 pandemic has impacted on lives and livelihoods across the globe. But there have been some bright spots among the globe. Let us see that. Cancer breakthroughs. I think a scientist in Australia reported preclinical laboratory studies of a new cancer vaccine has shown promising signs. We are hoping this vaccine could be used to treat blood cancer, but put solid magnesium into breast, lung, dental, ovarian, and pancreatic cancers and global asthma, said the lead researcher, Professor Kirsten Redford. The vaccine has been developed by researchers based at Australia's Cancer Action Research Institute in Colbert University of Queensland, UK. So I think a lot of research has happened and they are trying to break through cancer curing. In September, virtual 2020 meeting of the European Society of Medical Oncology, heard about a number of other developments, including a step forward in treatment for patients with newly diagnosed advanced ovarian cancer, a research breakthrough for high-risk high breast cancer patients, and a successful prostate cancer trial using an extract, uh, existing drug for breast and ovarian cancer. I think a lot of developments happened the last year. Net zero price of bridges climb. In September, the United Nations Climate Convention on Climate Change announced that zero commitments are roughly doubled in less than a year. Cities and regions with a carbon footprint greater than the emissions of the US and the companies with a combined revenue of 1.4 trillion, equal to more than half of the US GDP, are now pursuing net zero emissions by end of the year. I think very interesting development happened. Facebook, Ford, and New South Wales, Australia's most popular state, are among those who have joined the UN Race to Zero campaign, which means to grow net zero commitments ahead of COP26 UN Climate Conference in Scotland in 2021. I think there's a new zero pledge climb is going to happen and it's happening. Hepatitis B falls under price. Very interesting thing. In July last year, the World Health Organization reported that cases of hepatitis B in children under the age of five has dropped below 1% in 2019. The viral infection of the river that can cause liver cancer claims around 900,000 lives in a year. More than 250 million people live with the chronic hepatitis B infection. No infant could grow up only to die in hepatitis B because they were not vaccinated. Today, milestone means that we have dramatically reduced the number of cases of liver damage and liver cancer in future generations. This is what I think WHO Director General said. The new means of key target set out in the International Sustainable Development Program has been met. Very interesting thing of UN's, UN Sustainable Development Goals, SDG has been met. Helping hunger. Very interesting thing. World for World Food Program won 20,000 Nobel Peace Prize. So during 2019, the program helped uh, close to 100 million people <coughs> in 88 countries who are victims of acute food insecurity and hunger. The prize recognized the World Food Program's efforts to combat hunger, improve conditions for peace and conflict. Affected areas help prevent the use of hunger as a weapon of war and conflict. In the face of pandemic, the World Food Program has demonstrated an impressive ability to intensify its efforts. This is what the Novel, Novel Committee said in Norway. Norway. So they have got the Mumbai Peace Prize in 2020. The world's first 3DI, very interesting invention. The unveiling of the June of the last uh, world's first spherical artificial eye with the 3D retina raised the possibility of bringing mission to humanoid robots and new professions with visual impairment. I think the international team led by scientists at the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology developed an eye and says the capabilities are better than existing bionic eyes, but in some cases, even exceeded human eye. The key feature allowing such breakthroughs in 3D artificial retina made up of an array of nanowire light sensors, which mimic the photo receptors in human retinas, the scientists explained. I think the world past the 3D eye has been invented. 
gender equality, equality gains. In a country where yes, they have gender equality, but there are clear pockets of progress. The United Nations World Women 2020 report, published in October, found women's representation in parliament has more than doubled globally, reaching 25% of parliament in 2020. There are now 20 countries with a woman head of state government, woman head of state or government, up from 12 in 1995. Health outcomes for women have also improved in some key areas, particularly childbirth. The risk of maternal death has been reduced globally by 38% between 2000 and 2017, with the greatest reduction achieved in Southern Asia, reduction in 59% the UN says. I think very interesting, a punch, gender equality gains. The moon water discovery, I think another one has happened. Water in the moon is more widespread than previously thought and could help sustain future missions as drinking water of fuel. NASA announced in October. <coughs> the discovery was made by NASA's telescopic observatory of infrared astronomy, astronomy, Sophia. Whether the water of Sophia found is be easily accessible by for use as a resource remains to be determined, NASA says. But in NASA's Artemis program, the agency is eager to learn all it can about personal water on the moon in advance of sending the first woman and man to the lunar surface in 2024 and establishing a sustainable human presence there by the end of this decade. I think very interesting thing about uh, water discovery in the moon is moon dark, moon campaigning, and moon landing. Conservation success. I think uh, uh, 40 bird mammal species have been rescued from extinction by international conservation efforts in 1993. It was announced in September. They include the Asian uh, crested babies, yellow eared uh, yellow, yellow -eared parrot, avalian crew, spoon billed sandpaper, and red wolf. Black footed pirate and big me arm. Researchers at Newcastle University and conservation partner Bell Lake and analyzed the impact of conservation activity since the UN Convention on Biological Diversity came into effect in 1993. 15 bird and mammal species have become extinct or suspected extinct since then, but the extinction rate would have been three to four times higher without conservation action, the researchers said. So, conservation success is going to be uh, improved. Plastic action. I think very interesting thing of avoid plastics, right? The Ghana, Indonesia, and Vietnam are among the nations accelerating action on plastic waste as a part of global partnership attacking plastic pollution. The countries were showcased in September at the Fourth World Economic Forum Sustainable Development Impact Summit. <coughs> the Indonesia has pledged to reduce marine plastic debris by 70% by 2025. Ghana has committed to achieving 100% circular economy for plastics and Vietnam and community 70% contain many in plastic by 2030. These countries are partners in the World Economic Forum's Global Plastic Action Partnership, which aims to eradicate plastic pollution. I think this is another interesting thing that's happening faster. So I'd like to give acknowledgement now. This, all these slides have been prepared in consultation with the IIC, IITs, and IITs, collaborated by like Mental Academia, professionals from industry and government, and India, government of India outside and individual regional agencies. Professional association published journals. I think this is what, uh, that's why I said, this is presented by Dr. K.S., not by, not uh, Dr. K.S. author. So thank you very much for li listening to me. I think I finished exactly in one hour time. Thank you very much, and then I will open for questions. I think we'll all work together, everyone achieves more. I think there's an Indian campaign we want to promote. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, it was a wonderful as well as informative session. And I am sure this has enlightened our participants about the future and the challenges ahead. Uh, there are some questions by the participants which I would now take up with your permission. Yeah, okay. Uh, so the first question that we have from a participant, uh, we all realize the challenges that are uh, Oh, there for the mankind after this pandemic. But uh, is there light at the end of tunnel with the, all these technological advancements that we have around us? I think uh, the question and answer is, uh, without saying, it's already presented in the various slides. Things are improving. The business is going to grow. The technologies, the innovations are going to happen. And they're going to make life simpler, easier, and uh, worth living. I think this is going to happen and health is going to be improved and maybe possibly education is going to become nearer 
to us anytime, anywhere, anywhere, anytime, any of education. All the things are going to happen, make us better, better living in the planet. And our planet is also become pollution free. And also a kind of plastic waste is going to be removed. And a lot of things uh, like uh, air pollution is going to be reduced because of autonomous cars and then solar power vehicles and maybe electric cars are coming up. This all is going to change the way in which transportation is made. The railroads, air travel will change and it's more going to be healthier and going to be wealthier also. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, another question we have, does bad prediction affect one's career for a long term? We said that it has got affected, but we have to learn how to live in this world. So we have to have new skills, new developmental skills and new application skills we have to learn. New environment is coming up. So maybe possibly we should live in how uh, we have to change our living conditions too. That's what he said about offices are moving to remote areas. And maybe possibly uh, the workplace is going to be three to two a week. It's going to be better. And there are more time for leisure work. The office also has got a kind of leisure activities. And a lot of things are going to change. The environmental things are going to change. So I think we are we are trying to see any kind of new atmosphere around us, which will make us better. Better living and better educated, better skills. We have to live with that kind of uh, new inventions and inventions. Sure, sir. I would completely agree. Sir, another question I think that is from uh, some of our uh, academic uh, participants that we have. How should a student prepare themselves for, uh, let's say, the professional world uh, in this future now? I, I think uh, see, I have a special lecture on this because uh, the skill level requirement is going to be different. It no longer degree matters. That's why I think new education policy also says the capacity building, the kind of living around things, the kind of skills you have to develop from the school side to the college side to the professional side is going to be making a way, making a way to learn better skills and better talents. I think uh, talent nurturing and skill development is going to be a key role to play in our things to come. So we have to learn, learn those skills to live in a new environment. Uh, I would surely agree, sir. And uh, I think uh, all our participants will also agree on that. So uh, I think those were uh, most of the questions that most of our participants have asked today. So I would thank you, sir, for this wonderful session. It was actually wonderful to have uh, a part of your, your knowledge because uh, it was wonderfully well explained how you have covered all the challenges all the innovations that have happened in the at this point of time so uh sir please accept this certificate uh, from our side simply as a token of remembrance for this wonderful session that we have had with you today thank you sir thank you ma'am i think it's a very uh i think it deserves certificate i should have because uh, i tried to prepare a kind of uh, a package of slides which is going to be different than what normal technology slides are going to be delivered and second thing is overall development in various happening are things happening now name mm -hmm. working models the industry change the cultural change the health, the kind of uh, health changes i think a lot of things are demanded nowadays to be better living health and better living human beings i think we need to develop the kind of the kind of uh, good environment to live with that and good education and good skilling. We should do and capacity building to be increased at an affordable rate. This is what I think we are guess. So I tried to prepare and then maybe possibly I was a little past because I have to cover in one hour time. And nearly 60 slides were there. But I think it's all uh, maybe possibly each one slide model can be worked out, detailed, discussed for nearly 20 to 25 minutes. I think I was rushing through. Thanks a lot for giving me a slot and uh, share. Uh, I'm able to share some of my ideas, or collected ideas, views to make our best ourselves better. I also learned a lot of things in preparing these slides. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. It has been our privilege to have you as an expert today because uh, sharing just a part of your knowledge was also a wonderful experience. I also thank all my participants with this. Uh, who have been part of today's session.
we have also shared the feedback link in the chat window. So I request all my participants to kindly uh, fill the feedback link. This uh, room is now converted to a uh, call center. We are here to help you out. Any issues you have with your certificate, kindly inform us in the chat window. I thank all my panelists and my participants who have been with us today here for this session. It was a wonderful session by Professor K. Subramaniam. Our next webinar is planned on 19th February uh, with uh, on cloud computing. So I request all my panelists and participants to kindly join us back on 19th February. Meanwhile, this is time for your certificate generation. We have already sh uh, shared the feedback link in the chat window. I request all my participants to kindly and fill their feedback. Uh, Supramaniam, sir, I thank you thank once again for this wonderful thank you. session. Thank you very much. I think my thanks to Professor Wallan and the BV camp for hosting me on this today. Thank you.